Welcome everyone to another observability clinic. We are putting the spotlight on another app. Actually, we're putting the spotlight on the site Reliability Guardian, which we have seen a couple of months ago when it first came out. But now there's a big update, October 2023. And I have the lead product manager, Johannes. Servus, Johannes. How are you? Hi, hi. Doing good. Thanks for being here um, and having this chance and opportunity to talk about the newest highlights of the of the SRG. Perfect. Yeah, SRG, as you said, a lot of things have improved. And so we wanted to put another spotlight on it, on how the SRG, the Site Reliability Guardian, can help you to do things like uh, analyze the uh, impact of a new release um, from a performance, availability, and security perspective. Johannes, and uh, without further ado, yeah, I know you have some slides, but the most important thing is going to be a live demo. Go ahead. Right. All right. Uh, yeah, use case wise, nothing has changed. The site reliability garden is there to give you um, opportunity to validate your releases along the, the delivery pipeline and also to install um, a check, we call it, or a check which is there for validating changes that are happening in your production environment. Mm -hmm. But today I bring you uh, three highlights that mm -hmm. we worked on uh, over the summer and also based on feedback that we got after the launch. And the first one is about uh, templates, meaning the Site Reliability Guardian has now built in templates available, mm -hmm. which are there when creating a new Guardian. There you just select that one, which is relevant for you. Then it will ask you for um, entities you want to safeguard with this template. Mm -hmm. And with one click, you have then a running uh, Guardian available within your environment. This helps you to roll out uh, golden standards within your organization and also to keep your development teams on the same um, standard and to enforce uh, certain guidelines within your organization. And you make me very happy because I see four golden signals here, which is obviously from a site reliability engineering perspective, one of the golden standards, as you said, from errors, traffic, saturation, and latency. It's really great. This is a huge uh, improvement because it makes it so much easier to set up those guardians. Thank you so much for that. We will, yeah, we'll see uh, in a moment. That's just two clicks and you are there to have uh -huh. a running guardian. Mm -hmm. The second one, the second enhancement is a more a technical but very relevant uh, feature, so to say, mm -hmm. because uh, the objectives you configure using uh, Dynatrace query language. And there you can then define filter in the query but a uh, filter um, need to be a little bit more dynamic mm -hmm. because the one time the, uh, for one validation, you want to check version A, the next time version B. And to have here more flexibility, uh, we introduced uh, variables which allow you to provide the value of the, of the query filter um, at execution time. Mm -hmm. Johannes, one question on this. This also means then, if I'm if I see this correctly, that you could use DQL and actually query data from the current version, maybe even from the previous version, and then do a difference. So you can actually do things like, did we get better or worse, and then put a guardian on top of your regressions. Right, right, because you have the flexibility to bring the version number uh, in as mm -hmm. you would like to to query for mm -hmm. it, but. Um, with the power of DQL, basically, um, there is no limit on defining the objective that you would like to have there. That's great. Thank you so much. It's awesome. All right. And the last highlight is the more a visual mm -hmm. uh, representation uh, and a, a visual mm -hmm. thing that we introduced. And it's uh, the, a heat map view on the validations that happened over time. Um, and as you can see here, it gives you an an overview, an indication of what happened uh, over the last validations. Very useful, especially in terms of understanding um, the history and also the current status of what your releases are. Mm -hmm. But we will see this also live in a moment. Cool. Actually, yeah, and this brings me already to the demo. I think it's now the best yeah. to ju just jump over and to see the, the new features and highlights in action. Mm -hmm. And therefore, yeah, I go to the site reliability garden where we see the overview screen and I want to create now a new one. And when you go there to create a new guardian, then a pop-up appears mm -hmm. uh, where the templates are presented. Mm -hmm. 
right now uh, we have templates around Kubernetes, one uh, for uh, host related metrics and the one for security gates. The four golden signals are in the pipeline, but are, are coming soon. Mm -hmm. um, don't worry, Andy, they will be there <laughs> in a moment. Okay. But for now we have uh, those five where you get then all the details uh, about the objectives that are configured there. And yeah, let's take a look at this, this one, for example. Here we have then four objectives that are related to this template. And when I say uh, use this template now, the, the wizard will ask me for uh, entities that we would like to safeguard with this template. Mm -hmm. Here you have also the possibility to define a query to fetch for the entity you would mm -hmm. like um, to guard. Mm -hmm. Here it's already pre-configured that it requires a cloud application. Mm -hmm. When I run this query, I get a list of all the cloud uh, applications that are available in this environment. And for now, I go with this payment service. Mm -hmm. And when I click apply this template, then I have here a pre-configured ready to use uh, Guardian available. Because all the queries that are provided in this template are then uh, filled out correctly. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at this example. Here we have then um, referent, a reference to the monitored entity and also uh, the thresholds are set so that we can hit this run button and have a working uh, objective. Mm -hmm. That is really cool. I just want to say uh, nice, uh, especially with the wizard driven. These are the objectives then for which individual entities do you want to have it? The template obviously already knows what type is expected. Right. And then, uh, yeah. And then I guess the only thing left to do is click click on the create button or variables, maybe whatever I see up there. Right. Uh, var variables was already a good uh, indicator for the next feature I want to show you because templates are there to have a golden standard to, to rely on. But of course, you can extend them uh, the way you would like to do. And I'm now adding a new objective. And that one I want to uh, use to check um, for failed checkouts in our okay. application. And Therefore, already have a DQL prepared. I'm just bringing in, um, mm -hmm. and here it is. What this one does, just on a high level, it fetches for busy events, mm -hmm. uh, which are related to the checkout functionality, and then filters for those which are uh, labeled or have the status uh, checkout failed, and also are tied to a certain release. And here we have um, yeah, a release version, hard-coded. But um, as I said before, many or especially in this case, you have here a situation where you would like to be more dynamic, especially at that part, because the one time you want to execute the, the objective for version A, the next time for version B, and so on. Mm -hmm. And for having here more flexibility, we allow you to add a variable here. And that one starts with a dollar sign and you type in the name of the variable, which is up to you. Mm -hmm. And here, then this pop-up appears, or this overlay component, which already guides you to setting the default value for this variable. I, I, I want to go with version. Version, yeah, version yeah. right. Yeah. Uh, it's the version that we want to have here um, mm -hmm. dynamically set. And I created this variable with a default value. I just go with 0 .0 0.0.1, for example. Mm -hmm. And this is then also the fallback, meaning when uh, the value is not provided, it will then use uh, 0.0.1 mm -hmm. uh, for the execution of this query. Mm -hmm. So that means when you execute the Guardian, because you can execute the Guardian obviously either manually, but best is automated from a pipeline, you would pass in the version information that you want to enforce this Guardian on and if the version information would not be there, it goes with the default. Otherwise, it goes with the version information that you pass in from, let's say, your CD tool. Yeah, Absolutely Perfect. correct. Perfect. And this is what I want to show you uh, right now. Mm -hmm. Because we have now a template used, which we extended with one objective, which has a variable uh, built in. And when I now create this Guardian and want to execute this manually, I have mm -hmm. here these set variables 
mm-hmm. functionality where I can override um, mm-hmm. the value of this variable. Perfect. But actually more important is to also automate this aspect with a workflow. And let me therefore jump over to a workflow to also show you how to set variables there. And now go to an already prepared one, uh, which I actually used in the last spotlight we did, Mm -hmm. um, where I showed you this uh, workflow. And here is the workflow action for the site reliability guardian, the run validation action, which in this case uh, executes the the cards guardian. And here we can already see there's this new section of variables and this guardian has a variable uh, configured which is called a uh, log level and that one is currently hard coded uh, to info. But this is the place where we want to have the flexibility. We want to take information from our CI CD tools which are then uh, which is then used uh, to set this variable. And to do so um, what you can make use of uh, is the, the expression language and, and workflows where you basically extract information either from the triggering event or from um, from workflow actions which are executed uh, before the validation is kicked off. Mm-hmm. And I want to use a value from, a, from an event right now. Therefore, I say, give me the triggering event and the value I'm looking for um, is stored in log level. And so I would now get uh, the value out of the triggering event from the property log level. And to show you this in action, I say save and run. And this is now um, a demo template or a demo env- um, event. Mm-hmm. And here we have to add the new um, property log level and I set the value now to a warning and I think a comma at the line number 13 so but that's really great folks this is basically the event that you would send from your GitLab your Jenkins your Azure DevOps your Argo webhook you send this information to Dynatrace as a busy event and that busy event can then trigger the workflow and in the workflow you can extract every single piece of information this is also Johannes where in your previous example you used version. So version would be one field, which you also actually have here in the execution context as a variable as well, I see. So Mm -hmm. I I guess you can also just extract that, obviously, because execution context is part of the incoming event. Right, right. Actually, we take these properties uh, uh, out of the box. They will be consumed and uh, set automatically if they are there. Mm -hmm. Uh, But... For uh, this demo, I just want to have here an additional property to really show you um, how easy it is to bring in information into the uh, workflow execution and guardian validation. Thank you. I click now on run. And will be executed in a moment. Here it is. I jump over to the guardian for the card service. Mm And when we scroll down to the error rate, uh, which was the query that uh, relies on the log uh, variable, Mm -hmm. here we can now see uh, when we take a look that uh, at the query, that right now it was error, which is not correct, but let me give to a refresh. Yeah, I think you're looking, you were just looking at an older execution. Here we go, yeah, yeah. Right, this is- Now you got it here, yeah. Mm -hmm. This is the new one. Or that one um, I triggered. And here we take a look again. And that one was executed uh, with the warning um, value. That is really nice. Wow. And uh, so much new functionality that you built in here. Also, not only that you have variables, but the way you display them, the way you can configure them, the way you can pass it in. Uh, really, really powerful. Wow. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Um, Based on feedback that we got, um, we have yeah worked on on those components. And actually, the last one I wanted to highlight uh, today is is the heat map here mm-hmm. on top, mm-hmm. which is also very handy and useful to give you an overview over the history. And here you also have some flexibility to customize it the way you would like to have it. 
uh, for example, you can change the x axis by having here then also um, the values provided from certain properties. Let's switch over to a version and here we can mm -hmm. see the version numbers uh, that came along with the triggering event um, mm -hmm. I just showed you before. Mm -hmm. So that means uh, to recap, when you're triggering a site reliability guardian from a workflow and that workflow has an execution context with build ID, with version and with a unique ID, these IDs will be uh, automatically available uh, here but I guess also as variables. And then you can have additional variables that you can also pass in. So this is a, a really good, yeah. wow. Yep, absolutely correct. All the properties that are part of the execution context will appear here mm -hmm. automatically, mm -hmm. but you can bring in uh, also additional ones which are then available uh, for variables like we uh, showed or I showed you here with this log level mm -hmm. property. And last question I have on the execution context, because I can see in the section underneath the heat map where it says result and context, mm -hmm. I guess the context, this is also where it shows up there, what type of context was put in. Ah, perfect. Yeah. Right. And who executed it, which workflow executed it. I mean, this was, this is beautiful. And, Correct. Uh, Here you have a cross link um, to the workflow definition as well as to the workflow execution. Mm -hmm. And the properties are provided, which were part of exactly this mm -hmm. uh, validation. Mm -hmm. And then from the execution context, you, you're you showing the example with build ID, version, and ID. Are these the only ones that work within the execution context, or can you also just add as many as you want? Feel free to add those that are relevant for your use case. Mm -hmm. We take the properties that are part of the execution context and uh, consider them as first-class mm -hmm. citizen. You get mm -hmm. the labels there, you get them available in the heat map, mm -hmm. but uh, it's up to you which properties you would like to have there. And then for those people that have not yet installed the Site Reliability Guardian, you can obviously, like any other app in Dynatrace, you can install the app and find it on the hub. So if you go to your Dynatrace tenant, you just go to the hub and search for Site Reliability. And uh, here we go. And then this is how it looks like. And then on yours is obviously already installed. Otherwise, you would have the install button on the top right. In your case, it's already installed. Therefore, it's just open. Uh, you're showing this here on the demo live environment. I know you said this is also available on the playground tenant. Mm -hmm. We'll also add the link to the playground tenant because this is a tenant that is available for everyone. So everyone can explore the Guardian. Johannes, really Great. cool stuff. And thank you so much. And please give uh, kudos to the team who built this. This is a major step forward and just a huge improvement for all of our users. Thank you so yeah. much. Thanks a lot. We'll uh, bring the, the kudos back to the team. Yeah. All right. Great with this, work that they did. Exactly. And with this, I'm looking forward for the next time because I'm sure there will be even more improvements coming in the future. But for now, thank you so much. Bye-bye, everyone. Thanks for having me. Bye.